Okay everyone, today I'm going to be blowing up an air mattress with helium to see if it will float or I could float on it. So I've had a lot of requests to do this for some reason. So let's see if you can actually float on an air mattress that has helium in it. And let's see if it's actually more comfortable with helium than it is with air. Now there's only one problem with this experiment. Right now there's a national shortage of helium. I called my local air gas company, the people who supply uh, compressed gases, and they said that they won't have helium for another two years or so, they're guessing. So I had to do a little detective work and find my own source of helium. So after I do this experiment, then I'll explain why there is a shortage of helium and where does the helium even come from and where is it going? Why is there a shortage? So there's a company that makes these tanks of helium. It's actually only 80% helium. It's 80% helium, 20% air. But this should be good enough for this experiment. So I'm going to be using these tanks because I couldn't get pure helium because of the national shortage of helium. So let's see what happens when you put helium in an air mattress. Okay, first let's measure how much this thing weighs. 3.653 kilograms. So without any air or any helium in it, it's 3.653 kilograms. All right, let's lay this out. So this is a queen air mattress. Should be big enough for a magic carpet ride, don't you think? Whoa. <laughs> Look at this, it puffs right back up when I push on it. With normal air, it just kind of stays flat. It's not even pumped up all the way yet, but you can see how it pushes back on me due to the buoyant force. Okay, keep these empty tanks on here to keep holding it down as I fill it up. Okay, the moment of truth. Okay, now let's go ahead and remove these tanks and see if it floats up. Oh. Nope, it didn't work. <laughs> okay, so it didn't actually float up in the air, but it is very light, way lighter than when you have air in it. So let's see how much it actually weighs. And it's very bouncy. So this is around 3.18, 3.2 kilograms about. That's because the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the amount of fluid that it displaces. And so in water, you can get a pretty high buoyant force because water is pretty dense. And so if you can replace that dense water with some light things like air, then you get a really strong buoyant force. But in air, air isn't very dense. And so you have to have a really big volume to displace the amount of air to get a strong buoyant force upward. So that means that I would need around seven times this volume with the exact same amount of weight to even get it to barely float off the ground. Now it is a little bit less because the mixture I used was an 80%, 20% helium mixture, 80% helium, 20% air, but the results would be about the same. You need a lot of helium to lift even a small amount of weight. For example, let's say you wanted to try to make a wheel lighter by adding helium to it. So let's see how much lighter we can actually get it. 1980 grams is the highest we got there. But now let's fill it up with helium and see how much it weighs. Okay, now let's weigh it. 1978 grams. So you can see that by adding helium to the tire, it didn't really do anything. It weighed around 1980 grams without helium and around 1979 or maybe 80 grams with helium. So even adding helium to your tires isn't gonna make your bike any noticeably lighter either. 
So the key to making anything lighter with helium is having a huge volume. Once you can get that huge volume, that's when you start to get that really strong buoyant force. Now even though helium is the second most abundant element in the entire universe, the only reason we have helium on Earth here is due to the radioactive decay, mostly from uranium and thorium. These radioactive elements emit alpha particles, they're called, which are really just helium nuclei. And so basically these radioactive elements are always emitting helium and they get trapped in these natural gas pockets in the Earth. And so when we mine natural gas, we sometimes find helium in it. It can be in as high a concentrations as around 7%. And the reason we're running out is because helium is really interesting. It actually leaves the Earth's atmosphere once it enters the atmosphere. Okay, at first it may seem obvious why you'd think helium would leave the Earth because when we lick off a helium balloon, it goes up. But here's the thing, once that balloon goes high enough up in the atmosphere, eventually the air will get thin enough so that the helium inside the balloon is the same density as the air outside of it. So the balloons only go up a certain distance and then they kind of just stop and float there. Remember, the only reason that a balloon is floating is because it's displacing air. So if you let helium out of the balloon, <laughs> That helium that came out just disperses around the room. So it's no longer displacing air, it's just mixing with it. So the helium that mixes with the air in the room doesn't rise up anymore because it's not displacing any air, so it's no longer buoyant. What I mean is that, for example, this is 80% helium, 20% air. It's not like the helium hangs out at the top half of the cylinder and the air hangs out at the bottom half, but they're actually equally mixed throughout this. So elements like helium and hydrogen, because they're so small compared to the air molecules around them, so they have a distribution of speed that's really wide like this. And it turns out that the small tail end of that distribution does have high enough speed around seven kilometers per second to 11 kilometers per second. That's high enough speed to actually escape the Earth's gravity. So those tiny little helium atoms can get going fast enough once they randomly migrate up to a high enough altitude and get bumped just hard enough, they can actually leave the atmosphere. But something else weird is going on because if you calculate the amount of helium produced from uranium and thorium and the amount of helium we lose from the Earth's atmosphere due to its temperature distribution, you find that you're around three orders of magnitude off on the amount of helium that should be in our atmosphere. So there's something else that's making the helium fly off of our Earth. Now scientists aren't exactly sure what these extra reasons are, but they have some pretty good guesses. Some of these guesses have to do with the solar winds. It could be that helium plus ions are actually getting ejected from the Earth's atmosphere due to the polar winds. And another mechanism could be that the helium plus ions interact with nitrogen molecules in the atmosphere, and that gives it an extra kick when it transfers electrons that it actually ejects helium from the atmosphere. So instead of helium balloons in the future, I think we're just gonna have to settle for hydrogen balloons. I can't think of a reason why that would be dangerous. And I'd like to thank Wallabot Home for sponsoring this video. Now Wallabot Home is an exciting, cool new technology. What it is is a fall detection device for people who are at risk for falling at home. And what it does is it doesn't require anything to be worn on your body. Let me show you how it works, it's pretty neat. It maps out the room using radio frequency and it detects whether a person has fallen down. So basically it uses an algorithm to know whether they're standing up or laying down. And if they're laying down for too long, then it will automatically call a caregiver. Okay, so let's see if this actually detects me falling. So let's say you're just in your bathroom, do do do, slip on some water, whoop! So it gives you a little bit of time to get up, and if you can't get up in that amount of time... The wall of our home detected a fall. Please notice there's a blue wave on the screen and a blinking light on the device. Okay, it's calling me. So, in real use, this would be calling the caregiver. So if they answer it, then you can talk to them. And it shows up on the speaker there. Hello? So if you or someone you know might be at risk for falling at home, check out Wallabot Home now. You can click the link in my description to check them out. So let's see if it's actually more comfortable on a helium mattress. So it does seem a little bit more bouncy 
But I don't think it's much different than sleeping on an air mattress. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. And head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.